you know, I was listening, you know, we were just listening to that beautiful praise song called um, Call to Battle by Sister Crystal Campbell. And, uh, you know, again, the lyrics uh, go, um, wake up saints, it's time for battle. Wake up saints, the time has come. The enemy is all around us and war has already begun. Do you know that war has already begun? Do you know that there is a spiritual war happening right now for the souls of every man, woman, and child in these last days? Did you know that? I want to take you to a specific portion of scripture. Go with me very quickly to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 7, the word of the Lord reads as follows. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused him before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the very death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. He knows that he has a short time. Uh, you know, again, we, 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 you know, we live, you know, we're living in the end times and knowing that the devil has but a short time, knowing that he has a, you know, a great attitude problem. He has great wrath. The Bible tells us again, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Do you know that there is a short time? Do you know that time must delay no longer? According to the word of God, again, Revelation, this time chapter 10, verse 5, the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants, the prophets. What manner of person ought you to be? The Bible tells us very clearly in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord. Everyone say day of the Lord. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? This is our position in these end times. This is how we're to walk as men and women of God, young and old. In the body of Christ, we're to walk in holy conduct and godliness, knowing that the day of the Lord is at hand. Knowing that the second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. Knowing that the elements of this planet will be burnt up. All that is in it will be burnt up. Knowing that there's coming a new heaven and a new earth. What manner of persons ought we to be? Knowing that we're going to see our creator face to face. Some of us in righteousness and others in everlasting condemnation, shame, and judgment. The word of the Lord makes this very clear in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Talking about the great tribulation. Even to that time and at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. What book is this portion of scripture talking about? It's talking about none other than the Lamb's book of life. Which each and every one of our names must be in. In order for us not to be deceived. In order for us to ensure that we've been sealed for the day of redemption. In order for us to have obtained eternal life. Entering into the kingdom of heaven. 
Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Go with me very quickly to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We're living in the last days. War is all around us. Wake up saints. It's time for battle. Wake up saints. The time has come. Just like the lyrics of that song that we just heard moments ago. The enemy is all around us and war has already begun. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take up the shield of faith. Hold the sword of the spirit. For God's word always says to be strong and courageous. Stand your ground. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, saints, say above all. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Where's your word at tonight? Do you have your sword with you? Are you packing? Are you armed? Do you have it on your right side, your left side? Do you, do you, know, do you carry your sword with you? I do. I carry it on me and it's in me. I sleep with it. I eat with it. I meditate on it. It's my life. It's who I am now. Where's your sword at? Wake up, saints. It's time for battle. Wake up, saints. It's time. Has come. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. The gospel of Matthew chapter 24 verse 6 tells us. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. These are signs of the end times. I like Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20. Go there with me very quickly. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 51. I want to read it a bit in context. Let's go to verse 17. It says the following. Actually, let's read it. We'll start it in verse 15. He has made the earth by his power. Talking about the great God, Jehovah. Hashim. El Elohim Israel. Elohim. God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. He has made the earth by his own power. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. How beautiful are those words. He stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. Everyone is dull hearted. Without knowledge, every metalsmith is put to shame by the carved image. For his molded image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. So many people worshiping false idols made by man's hands in these end times. They're futile. They're foolish. They're work of errors. In the time of their punishment, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the maker of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you, listen, this is the word of God to each and every one of us tonight. We're soldiers in Christ. Wake up, saints. It's time for a battle. Where's your sword at? Where's your mind at tonight? 
Have you submitted and surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? Are you part of the army of God in these end times? Have you even signed up for boot camp? The Lord says, you are my battle axe. You are my weapons of war. We are we I'm a weapon in the hands of the warrior. The great God, Jehovah, God Almighty. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord God is his name is what the book of Exodus says about our God. You are my battle axe and weapons of war for you, with you. I will break the nation in pieces. What nation has surrounded themselves against you? What person, place, or thing has sought to rise themselves up against the child of God tonight? The Lord says, well, with you, I will break the nation in pieces, not by someone else. Stop seeking deliverance outside of my word. Stop seeking deliverance by a hand of another. Nothing wrong with deliverance ministries, but the Lord says, I'm calling you to be my weapon of war. You are my battle axe. I look at you completely different than the way you see yourself. You're constantly wanting to go everywhere else. And you need to understand that we're living in the end times. That there's a war raging around us. And you're not to run in fear. You're not to run and hide. You're not to put your head in the sand. You're not to act like none of it is happening. You're not, and, and you're definitely not to act like that you're just a scaredy cat. You're just full of fear. You can't do anything because the Bible tells us, the word of God tells us, let the weak say I'm strong. Even in your weakness, you are strong. He, he, he places a demand on you. To state that you are strong in him. It's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. He says, let the weak say that I'm strong. If you're weak tonight, say I'm strong. I'm strong, Lord. Father our God, I thank you for my strength tonight. I thank you that you are my strength. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening me tonight. Thank you. I thank you, God, for your word, which is living and powerful. Your word is living and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Make me that two-edged sword. Out of all the weapons in your army, let me be the sharpest. Let me be the most intimidating. Let me be the one that will be the surprise attack upon the enemy's camp. Let it be me, Lord. Let it be me. I'm your battle axe, O oh Lord. I'm your weapon of war. Yes, we're living in the last days, and no, I'm not going to be afraid. The Lord said, he told Joshua... He said, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you whithersoever thou goest. Wherever you go, he's with you. He's with you wherever you go. Have I not commanded you? Again, he said, I'm not suggesting you not to be afraid. I'm not asking you not to be afraid. He said, this is a, a direct command. I've placed a demand of my word on your life. I place a demand of my word over any fear you may even experience and what they may even seek to stop you from what I've called you to be in these end times. You're, you're more than a conqueror. You're my weapon. You're my armory. How, how, how are you going to be a soldier and a weapon at the same time? I think that, that, that you know, that's, you know that, that, that's, that's wisdom. That, that, that's the awesome intelligence of our God that he makes us not just a soldier but an actual weapon in his mighty hand and with us by us he breaks nations in pieces he says with you I will destroy kingdoms what kingdom has sought to establish itself against the kingdom of God in your life the Lord says listen listen in these end times I'm going to shake heaven and earth anything that can be shaken will be shaken he tells us this in the book of Hebrews I want to read this specifically keep your spot in Jeremiah I'm not done there Go with me very quickly to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25. He says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him, talking about God Almighty, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. God is speaking to us right now. He speaks to you morning, noon, and night. Are you listening? Do you have a discerning spirit? Is your heart, uh, uh, you know, of a good and obedient ground? Are you, you know, do you have ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying? Let it be that you are not, do not turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice, listen to this. Whose voice has shook the earth, but now he has promised saying, yet, everyone say yet. Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. 
Now this, yet once more, indicates a removal of those things that are being shaken. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. You're going through a shaking. We're, we're living in the end times. Wake up, saints. It's time for battle. Wake up, saints. The time has come. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which can never be shaken, it cannot be shaken, you shall be as Mount Zion, which is established forever, never to be removed. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. This is who we are in Christ in these last days. We're his weapon of war. Again, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20. You are my battle axe. You are my weapons of war. And I love the fact that it says weapons is plural. Meaning that he could, he, he could change you into any weapon he desires. You're my weapons of war. For with you I will break the nation in pieces. With you I will destroy kingdoms. Again, what kingdom dare come up against the kingdom of God in your life? A kingdom that you have received which can never be shaken. I know of another kingdom called the kingdom of darkness. The Bible tells us that there will be, you know, the kingdom will rise up against kingdom in the end times. Clearly that's happening in these last days. Besides the fact, you know, that we see kingdoms all around the world rising up against each other. We know that in the spirit that we have, we have the kingdom of darkness seeking to rise itself against the kingdom of God. Again, it's in the book, uh, you know, it's in, it's in the scriptures. It's in second Corinthians. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. For what? For the pulling down of strongholds. These strongholds, these demonic strongholds come from the enemy's camp. It comes from the kingdom of darkness. For the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus. And then punishing disobedience when your obedience has been fulfilled. The only way that you even get to the last part of that scripture, which happens to be one of my favorite parts. I remember reading that for the first time, or maybe the second time. I just got revelation on that last part. I, I got revelation on that I got revelation on that last part about you know punishing disobedience when your obedience has been fulfilled. I said, Lord, fulfill my obedience. So I could punish disobedience when my obedience has been fulfilled. And this is what it looks like. In order for you to even be a punisher. You have to be broken. You have to understand that we're living in the last days. You have to submit and surrender your entire life to Jesus Christ. You have to allow the spirit of God to rule and reign in every part of your life. Every fiber of your being. And then from that point on, he changes you. He transitions you. He consecrates you. He sets you apart. He makes you his. You become holy as he is holy. You, you receive the mind of Christ. You become renewed in the spirit of your mind. You are no longer to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. You become now the battle axe of God. You become the weapons of war. And when you get to that position in the army of God, you now get to break the nations in pieces. You now destroy kingdoms. Everyone knows you. With you, the Lord says, I will break in pieces the horse and its rider. With you, I will break in pieces the chariot and its rider. With you, also, I will break in pieces man and woman. With you, I will break in pieces old and young. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and the maiden. With you, I, I, I also, I will break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you, I will break in pieces the farmer and his yoke of oxen. And with you, I will break in pieces governors and rulers. I, the Lord says, will repay Babylon by you, my servants, my prophets, my handmaidens, my men servants. In the last days, the word of the Lord tells us, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams. On my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those last days and they shall prophesy. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it will come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. As much and as awesome that word is at the last. You don't want to be at that last. You don't want to barely make it in. You want to be to where you're in and now the Lord does a work. A work that only he can do to make you what he's called you to be. A soldier in Christ, prepare for battle, his weapon of war, to break things, 
to be that, that, you know, that sledgehammer. There's another portion of scripture in Jeremiah. I'd have to take a moment to find it, but I think I know it by heart where the word says, it says, it's not my word. You know, the word, of, you know, the Lord God himself says this. He says, it's not my word like a fire, like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. He literally makes us his word. He makes us that sharp two-edged sword to come out of our mouth. He makes us his weapon of war. Again, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. What is that weapon? We just read it in Ephesians. Taking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We become a weapon in God's armory. We become the very word. I think that's awesome. I think that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Now, now, now when we read Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 through 4, where it says, when you go out to war against your enemies, let's read it uh, specifically again, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 through 4, and then I actually need to give you some headlines about war happening in the news. Well, happening around the world. It's been reported in the news, but first let me leave you, you know, let me, let me take you to this one portion of scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 20, starting in verse 1 through 4, Deuteronomy chapter 20, starting in verse 1 through 4, this, I, I like this portion of scripture. This is actually principles governing warfare, but it says here, when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. If you have fear, let it be unto the Lord. Let God be your fear. Let God be your dread. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And if you're to fear anything, you're to fear the Lord. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge of the Holy One, the beginning of understanding. When you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots, you see the numbers. You see that they outnumber you. You're clearly outmatched. There's no way. You're going to be able to win this one in the flesh, in the natural. There's absolutely no way. He says, don't be afraid. I get it. He says, I'm not suggesting this to you. This is not a recommendation. This is a command. You will not be afraid. Do not be afraid for them, of them. For the Lord your God is with you. That's the reason why. He says, I made them and I know how to break them. I know what I'm doing here. You don't be afraid of something that I made that I can break and turn into powder and dust. Remember Lot's wife. Remember when she turned. I didn't even have to touch her. The wind made her into salt. Don't be afraid of these, of these people, these jokers or nothing. They, they become your enemies and yes, they're out, you know, look, they outnumber you. 500 to 1 even. But you don't be afraid of them. Your fear belongs to me because who you fear is who you worship. What you give your fear to is what you worship. And he says, I take that seriously. You worship me. The Lord says, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You worship the Lord. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why he says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You have the wisdom of God. You know that what you fear is what you worship. You're not going to fear nothing. You're not going to fear no one except the Lord your God. Again, let God be your fear. Let God be your dread. Let it, let it, let, you say, wait a minute. What, what scares me most? Okay, yeah, I see this army coming against me. I know that all hell's breaking loose against me. I see this. I'm not, I'm not oblivious to this. I'm not hiding my head. I'm not in denial here. I see this. But what scares me more is not this army that's even sought to even exalt itself above me or try to come against me, come against the word of God in me. That's not what frightens me. What frightens me is that I dare disappoint my God to even make it look like I'm afraid of this. I'm going to stand in the evil day having them all to stand. I've been called for this. I've been trained for this. The Lord says, listen, do not be afraid of them for the Lord your God is with you. He says, I'm with you. I'm your covering. I'm your shield. I'm your exceeding great reward. I got your rear guard, I got your front, I got every part. I, I, you're in the secret place of the most time. When they see you, they won't see you. They're going to see me. And they're going to run and flee in terror. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The word flee in the Greek literally means that the devil will run in terror. Your enemies will run in terror. Because you've submitted to God. And by submitting to God, by default, you've resisted the devil. And now the devil will flee in terror. Freaked out, running for his life in panic. Check this out. Check this out. 
It says here again, when you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So it shall be. This is the same God that made you born again. This is the same God that, 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 you know, when it says here from the land of Egypt, he brought you up from your old life and made you a new creation in Christ. He says, don't forget, I'm the same one who saved you, who made you born again, who filled you with my spirit, who gave you my word, who gave you an authority, who gave you my name. Your name is written in my book. You now, you have my name as your, as your, as your signet. He says, I'm the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So it shall be when you are on the verge of battle. That the priest shall approach and speak to the people and he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. And somebody tonight, you may be on the verge of battle with your enemies tonight. Maybe you're wrestling against some people, some co-workers, some very serious situations. Maybe you've gotten involved in some type of lawsuits or something that's even maybe threatened your life. Maybe you're, maybe it's something spiritual and you can't fight it in the flesh. If you could just punch it in the face, you could, but you can't. And you know that your, your battle is not with flesh and blood, but with, you know, with the, you know, with the principalities and the powers and the, and the rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And you're on that verge of battle with your enemies. The word of the Lord says to you, do not let let your heart be a faint. Do not let your heart faint. The mere fact that I'm even speaking this word to you, your heart is receiving it and it will not be faint. It will be strengthened by the spirit of God. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord, because the Lord, your God, is he who goes with you. You're not going by yourself. You're not even going to be seen in this. You can look at yourself in the mirror. You can see yourself. You're, I don't see God, but God says, I'm with you. I cover you. When they see you, make no mistake about it. They're going to see me because the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm getting glory for this one. And I will share my glory with no other. And because you submitted and surrendered your life to me, I'm going to get not only get to do this and get all the glory, but now I'm going to bless you for it. With long life, I will satisfy you, beloved, and show you my salvation. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, because I will have my angels to keep charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. I myself will be with you. Again, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you. He's not going to be up somewhere in the sky, a hundred thousand miles high and, and say, hey, I see you down there. You know, good luck. And hopefully, you know, you win this. But if not, I'll see you up here in heaven. You're going to come home anyway. No, he says, no, I'm coming with you. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you. He says, I'm, a, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing this myself. You got me excited over here. You did something to, to shake up the enemy's camp and I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. He wants to show himself strong. Not so much to the enemy or to the enemy's camp or to the kingdom of darkness because they already know him. But to you. God wants to show himself strong to you. He wants to impress you. And he will impress you. He's a good God. And he loves us very much. Amen. Praise the Lord and amen. Father God, we give you all the praise and all the glory tonight. Listen again, I got some headlines to get into. But first, let me say hi to you all. See what you all are talking about on the church chats. God is good. Like I was saying, his mercy endures forever. Amen and amen. Listen, it's the holidays. Come on. Uh, Christmas is right around the corner. I want to ask that you don't forget about this ministry and all your giving. Come on, give towards the work of this end time ministry. Your financial donations help make the work of this end time ministry possible. And your donations are needed now more than ever before. Uh, we have to meet our monthly budget this month specifically for the entire year. And so your donation, anywhere between $25, $50, $100, some of you could probably even give more, would be a major help towards the work uh, you know, of the ministry that we do here and to wrap up our year strong in Jesus' name. So take a moment, log on to our website at www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com, and place a donation today. Some of you could even become monthly partners. It's really easy, and it'll, it's, it's just, it, it helps towards the work. And, it, you know, it, it saves souls. I mean, it's just, what an awesome way to say thank you, Lord, during this time of year that honors Him. Why not honor the work that he's in, the ministry, amen? He's the one who's fighting for us. Come on, 
Uh, you could again donate www.openyoureyespeople.com. Our mailing address as well is PO Box 218, Shirts Texas 78154. PO Box 218, Shirts Texas 78154. I always want you to give, not just cheerfully. Always give cheerfully. Um, don't ever let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. What the Father sees in secret, He will reward you openly. And always give for the salvation of souls. By doing so, as you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, everything else is going to be added on to you. So we'll seriously, whatever you need will seriously be taken care of by the Lord because you sought first the kingdom of God, which is souls. When you give toward the work of this ministry, I can't talk for anybody else's ministry. I don't know their heart. I don't need to know their heart. I know my heart. I know the work. I know the hearts. I know the heart of this ministry. It's all souls. When you give, give towards the salvation of souls and you will be blessed. God makes that promise in Jesus name. Open Your Eyes People is an end time publication broadcast with specific focus on the signs of the times, end of the age, the day of the Lord quickly approaching. This is Evangelist Anita Fuentes. Open Your Eyes People brings you the latest in breaking news world headlines, matching Bible prophecy. God said in Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 through 10 that he declares the end from the beginning. Are we living in the last days? Is all that is happening been prophesied in the Bible? Are we the last generation? Are we headed for the greatest tribulation that the world has ever seen? These and many more questions are answered on the Spirit-led broadcast. With over 180 nations tuning in each week, it's no wonder God is using this broadcast to see hundreds come to salvation each week, rededicate their lives, and sharpen their walk in the narrow way. We need your help. We cannot do this alone. We need your help to keep and expand the work of this broadcast ministry to reach even more souls. The time is short and the day is dawning. Donate today. www.emof.org That is www.emof.org We need your donations. Visit us today.